Hello everyone. In this video, we continue section 7.5 so about solving trigonometric equations. In this video, we are going to see how to solve trigonometric equations on the interval 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, I have a couple of examples actually. I have, I think, five examples here. Uh, let's work on the example to get examples together. Okay, so the first example. Uh, is a linear equation. Solve for c can theta plus three equals eleven over the interval zero to two pi. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, let's try to find what secant theta is. Okay. So for secant theta equals eleven minus three, right? If I subtract three from both sides, for secant theta is equal eight secant theta is equal to eight over four, which is two, right? So if secant is two, uh, I get cos is cosine theta is equal to, just flip the two, right? One over two, okay. Which angle is that? Cosine is one over two, cosine is a special triangle, right? Okay. This is 630. Ninety, right? Sixty, sorry, sixty, thirty, ninety. One, two, root three, and uh, cosine should be one over two, right? And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so theta is equal to sixty, right? This is the first solution. But remember, uh, to get the same cosine in a different angle. I just need to keep the x coordinates fixed, right? Remember, on the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinate, y is the y coordinate. That's why I need to keep the uh, x coordinates fixed. That's why I just need to flip this point through the x axis to get the other angle. It should be 60 again, right? Mm, this time, negative root 3 and two, but cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so again, one over two. But of course, if I go this direction, it will be negative 60, but the answer should be between zero and two pi, so I have to go counterclockwise direction. And this angle is, actually, starting from all the way here, this angle is 360 minus 60, right? Which is 300. So 60 degrees and 300 degrees. These are the solutions, okay? So we just need to solve for the trigonometric function. After getting that, try to find the appropriate theta, okay? All right, let's look at the next example. This time we have a quadratic equation. Sine squared plus two sine theta minus three is equal to zero. And if you see a quadratic equation, so you can always use the quadratic formula, right? Minus b plus or minus uh, root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But all you can also try to factor if you can, all right? So let's try to factor sine squared theta plus two sine theta minus three is equal to zero. So let's try to factor this guy sine theta, sine theta, and minus three, factors of minus three uh, can be minus, so plus three minus one, right? Three minus one makes two. Yes, we could factor very nicely. So after getting factors like that, so each set each factor equal to zero, okay? So sine theta is equal, plus three is equal to zero. And from there I get sine theta is equal, minus one is equal to zero. And sine theta plus three is equal to zero. So sine theta is equal to minus three. And from this, there is no solution, right? Because sine is always between one and negative one, right? So not, so not possible. Since 
sign is always between one and negative one. So it cannot be less than negative one. So this is not possible, okay? So there is no solution coming from this factor. Let's look at the other factor. Sine theta is equal, sine theta minus one is equal to zero. From there I get sine theta is equal to one. Okay, where is, uh, okay. Which theta is that then, right? So let's try to remember the unit circle again. And remember on the unit circle, x, so y coordinates are sine theta. So I, I need to find the y coordinate way where we have y is equal to one. And this is the only point, right? Between zero and two pi. So theta is equal to 90 degrees or pi over two. Okay, of course this point is zero comma one, right? So we have only one angle this time, all right? Okay, I hope it's clear for everyone. Okay. Let's look at this example. Two cosecant squared plus cosecant minus one is equal to zero. Again, we are gonna try to factor this I hope we can factor. But in any case, if you cannot factor, that's fine. You can just use the quadratic formula. So, and two cosecant squared can be factored as two cosecant theta and cosecant theta. Minus one can be factored as plus one, minus one, right? And I am doing that way because if when you foil this guy, two cosecant theta plus times one is two, cosecant theta, minus one times cosecant theta is minus cosecant theta. So two cosecant minus cosecant is cosecant. So I got the middle term, right? Cool. So from there I get two cosecant theta minus one is equal to zero. And cosecant theta plus one is equal to zero. So let's solve each equation separately. Two cosecant theta is equal to one cosecant theta is equal to one half. And if you flip it, cosecant is one over sine, right? So sine theta is equal to two. All right, is this possible? No, again, right? Because sine cannot be bigger than one. So not possible. From the same fact, right? Sine is always between negative one and one. So from the next, uh, from the next equation we get Cosecant theta is equal to minus one. Mm. So from there, what is sine theta? Just flip minus one, right? It will be one over minus one. So it is minus one again. So sine theta should be equal to minus one. And let's go back to our unit circle in the previous example. Again, sine, theta, sine is y coordinate, right? So y coordinate should be minus one which is this point, right? This is zero comma minus one. So this is the only solution then. So from there I get theta is equal to, which angle is that? 90, 180, 270. 270 degrees or three pi over two in radians. Okay, so no solution is coming from the first factor. One solution is coming from the second factor. So the total solution is only one solution, okay? Okay, let's look at the next example. Next example, 36 sine squared is equal to 18. Let's divide both sides with 36. Sine squared theta is equal to 18 over 36. And of course I can simplify that. I will get one half. So sine theta is equal to that. Don't forget that right plus or minus root one half. And I can rewrite this as plus or minus one over root two. Okay, so we have two solutions. Sine is one over root two and minus one over root two. And uh, which angle is that? Is this a spatial triangle? The answer is yes, right? Which spatial triangle is that? It's the 45, 45, 90, right? 45. This is 45, 45, 90. One, one, root two, right? 
Okay. So one over root two. So theta actually from, maybe I can write this way. Sine theta is equal to one over root two. What I get is theta is equal to 45 degrees. Is this only theta that gives one over root two? No, right? Uh, sine is also positive in the second quadrant. In other words, uh, I need to keep the, I need to have the same y value to do so, I can just take the symmetry through the y-axis, right? This point also has the same sign, right? So what is the sign of, what is the angle of this point? Of course, we have to start from the x-axis and go all the way down here. So the straight angle is 180, so 180 minus 45 is 135. Okay. All right, this is from sine theta is equal to one over root two. So we get two solutions from there. But this is not all, right? Because sine can be also equal to negative one over root two. So what are the solutions coming from there? Okay. Maybe I can write that down here. Sine theta is equal to negative one over root two. This is also a spatial triangle, right? But this time, uh, we go this way, why? We need to have y value as negative, right? Because it's negative one over root two. So to make y value negative, just find the symmetry of this point through the x-axis, right? So one, and this will be negative one and root two, and 45 here as well. So sine of this angle is negative one, right? So, sorry, negative one over root two, which is what I, which, which is, which is what we want. So what is theta then? And again, we have to go counterclockwise to get that angle. So one whole angle is 360. I need to subtract 45. 360 minus 45 is 315 degrees, right? Okay. And it's not all right. This, the, we have another theta angle which gives the same sine value, right? And to, got, to, to find that, just find the symmetry through the y-axis. Because remember, the sine is decided by the y value on the new circle. So I need to keep the same y value. And to keep the same y value, I can just find the symmetry through the y-axis, okay? Because again, this will be negative one, right? And this will be one. Uh, so this, sorry, sorry, it's actually, yes. Yeah, this will be negative, this will be negative one either. So, uh, what is this angle then? This angle is 180 plus 45, right? 180 plus 45 is 225 degrees. Okay, so we have four different angles that satisfy the that satisfy the given equation. All right, I hope it's clear. Let's look at the next example, and this time, uh, okay, I think we cannot factor it. That's why we can apply the quadrat uh, quadratic formula. So cosine theta is equal to minus b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? And a is one, b is three, and c is minus one. So let's just plug them here. Minus three plus or minus three squared minus four times a, which is one, and c, which is minus one divided by two times a, a is one, so just two. Okay, so what is that? Minus three plus or minus root nine, All right? Three squared is nine. Minus four times one times minus one is plus four. Nine plus four is 13. 13 over 2. 
Okay. First of all, uh, so we have two options, right? Cosine theta is equal to minus three plus root 13 over two. And cosine theta is equal to minus three minus root 13 over two. Root 13 is three point something, right? So minus three minus root 13 over two is less than negative one, which is not possible again, right? So this guy is less than negative one, and which is not possible because cosine is always between one and negative one, right? So this is not possible. So the only solution is coming from here. And as I said, root 13 is three point something. Uh, so this angle is, so this, the upper side, upper part here is the numerator is between zero and one. So this guy is in the, so this guy is less than one then, right? That's why this is possible. So what is the theta then? How can I find the theta? Theta will be, uh, you can use calculator, but let me just write this way. Cosine inverse of, right? So arc cosine of negative three plus root 13 over two. And this is the first quadrant, right? You can think this way. So this is theta, let's say. But I can get uh, another angle that gives uh, the same cosine, right? Remember how to do that? Just find the symmetry through the x-axis. So this angle is also uh, giving the same cosine. But what is that angle? Again, start from the x-axis all the way down come here. It is 360 or two pi minus theta, right? So two pi minus cosine inverse of negative three plus root 13 over two. So we, we have again two solutions to this equation here. The equation on the right here is not possible because less than negative one, but this guy is not, this guy is between negative one and one, so it's possible. And even actually the top part is positive. That's why this guy is in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant, right? Cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrant. And how do you get that the angle? This is a spatial triangle angle, right? Uh, that's why I'm just writing it, the answer as cosine inverse. And after getting this angle theta here, I can get the other angle that gives the same cosine by just finding the symmetry of that angle. And symmetry is this, right? So uh, I need to find then this whole angle here, right? All the way down here to there. And this angle is two pi minus theta. And theta is this, right? So now we got two solutions for the theta, all right? Okay, so let me stop here for this video. In the next video, I will continue to solve trigonometric equations, maybe in different formats, all right? Okay, see you in the next video.